Hey everyone, welcome back to the homestead. I am Nadine. Today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the pests we've been dealing with in the garden and on our homestead and kind of what we're doing to help with those problems and mitigate the effects of said pests. So let me take you to the garden. We'll start there and I will show you um, some of the pests we've been dealing with and how we've been dealing with them. So one of the biggest pests I've been dealing with in my garden this year has been squash beetles. So squash beetles, uh, they go after all of your vining squash type plants. So your pumpkins, your squashes, your melons, any of that, um, zucchini, they go after all of those plants and will literally annihilate your plants. What they do is they stick their proboscis or their mouth parts into the leaf and the stems of your squash plants and basically eat the plant. But then they also lay their eggs all over it to leave their babies behind. And one squash beetle can lay upwards of 200 eggs a year. And so they're really just a problematic bug. And so what I've been doing to help with the squash beetle populations in my garden is one, sprinkling food grade diatomaceous earth on my vining squash and melon plants. So this is the brand that I use, diatomaceousearth.com. It is food grade diatomaceous earth and I get it in the 10 pound bags. And then I also got this shaker. Um, I love the, the various sized holes in the top for shaking it on your plants. And I just marked it. Always mark your stuff so you know what's in there. So diatomaceous earth is basically crushed up fossilized crustaceans, I think. Um, and it is a mechanical killer. So instead of you spraying chemicals and toxins and pesticides and things on your plants, the diatomaceous earth is a powder that basically gets into the creases and crevices of their exoskeleton and cuts them apart, thus killing them. So I've been sprinkling this all over my vining plants and that has helped. But another thing I've been doing is just simply removing the bugs and the eggs from the plants. And I wanted to show you guys how I do this. So I've seen lots of people do this by using duct tape, boxing tape, and I've used all of those. But recently I started using a lint roller and I have to say it's by far my favorite way to remove squash bugs, squash bug eggs, um, pupa, young squash bugs, like all of that. So let me show you how to do this. So first you want to find yourself a leaf that has squash bug eggs, eggs on them. They look like this, a little cluster of eggs. They can either be on the top of the leaf or underneath the leaf like this. I've even found them on the stem of the plant. Anyway, you flip it over to expose the eggs and then you take your, oops, sorry, you take your lint roller and whew, you roll it where the eggs are. Sometimes because of the placement of the eggs, you gotta work a little bit harder to get in there with the lint roller or just scrape them off and then pick them up. And it doesn't leave your leaf torn, although I did tear it just holding it, um, and your eggs are stuck to it. It's a lot easier when they're on top of the leaf because you don't have all the veins to deal with. And just roll them off of, oh wait, there's another one stuck on there, off of the leaf like so. 
You can also use it for juvenile squash bugs like this one. And they get stuck to the lint roller. There's quite a few of them on here. Oop. And then they end up stuck to the lint roller. I like to go back through and just kind of squish them on there so they can't fall off. But yeah, so that's how I use a lint roller to collect squash beetle eggs and young bugs off of my plants. Another thing that you can do to help get rid of the squash beetles in your garden is to bring out a jar of soapy water and just knock the larger bugs and beetles into the jar of water like the adult squash beetle bugs. Like this guy right here would get knocked into a soapy jar of water. This guy too. And that's just another way to physically get rid of the bugs in your garden. Another pest that I've dealt with this year is the cabbage moths or the cabbage worms. And these go after your cabbage, your broccoli, your cauliflower, things like that. And they end up just eating your plants down to nothing. Plus, they're really dirty, so they leave poop everywhere. This is actually one. And the way I've been dealing with these is just pulling them off. So they look like this, and I just throw them in for the chickens to eat. Some ways that you can help mitigate um, the, or not squash beetles, um, the cabbage worms on your broccoli, your cauliflower, your cabbage, things like that, is to put a fine mesh netting over top of them while they're starting to grow. And this will prevent the butterflies, the little white cabbage moths or butterflies or whatever they are. This will keep them from landing on your plants, which means no eggs, no caterpillars. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how I've been dealing with those this year is just picking them off and throwing them into the chickens as I find them. Most of the stuff that they've eaten has been going to the chickens anyway because there's just been so many of them this year. Another pest I've been dealing with in the garden is um, aphids. It was earlier in the season. Now that we're kind of in the heat of summer, the cabbage worms have decreased and the aphids kind of went away. Um, but what I did with the aphids, they were really messing with uh, my cantaloupe here in the, the earlier months of spring. And the reason I noticed was like the leaves were curled over almost kind of like burrito style. And when I flipped them over, they had aphids all in the, the creases and there were ants farming them and it was just a mess. So what I did was I came in and I picked off all of the affected and infested leaves and I dumped them in a bucket of soapy water and then I went back through and I dusted my cantaloupe vines with some diatomaceous earth to help get rid of the ants, to help get rid of the aphids. And that seemed to work because I don't have that problem anymore. So that's pretty much it as far as pests go in my garden. Um, how I'm helping my plants kind of recover from the pest damage is pruning. Um, I prune off all of the dead, diseased looking foliage and I throw it in the burn pile. And that just helps the leaves or the plants focus on new foliage, healthy green vines and things like that. And that seems to be really helping. So a lot of my vines you'll notice are kind of barren down towards the bottom. And this is kind of just gradually going up the plant. As you can see, I have some more leaves that need cut off. So a lot of the vining stuff down closer to the roots like over on the pumpkins here. Um, there's just no foliage and that's why. So that's how I've been taking care of my plants that have uh, some plant damage or some pest damage and uh, just trying to keep things under control here in the garden. Now we have another pest on our homestead that we have been dealing with and that's flies. So as many of you guys know, 
um, animals have excrement and excrement creates a smell that flies really like. So with us having bunnies and chickens and ducks and turkey and quail, we have a lot of poop around here, which means we have a lot of flies around here. So we've been dealing with getting rid of or decreasing the fly population here on our homestead. And some things we've been doing here is one, sprinkling diatomaceous earth every time we clean the coops and hutches um, where the poop would be, and that'll help get rid of larvae, eggs, adult varieties, so on and so forth. We've also put out some fly traps. We've been using these ones. This one needs emptied and refilled. Um, we have a couple of these around our homestead and they've been working really well. As you can see, there's some flies in there now. But the fly traps have been working really well. And so that's how we've been dealing with the flies on our, our rabbit tree. And then we have one other pest that we've been working diligently to get rid of. And that pest is rats. We have a rat colony again on our homestead. We had one about a year and a half ago we got rid of by making my chicken feeders. I'll link a video up here on how I made those. We got rid of the colony, we haven't had a problem, and then I added ducks to our homestead again. But well, if you guys remember, we got some new ducks and we put them back here in the orchard area to help fertilize the new um, fruit trees that we put in. And with the ducks, we ended up utilizing the old feeder style that I was using with the PVC elbows. This was a huge, mistake because we have the rats again because of those feeders. So to deal with the rats, we've purchased a lot of the rat traps. So we picked up a bunch of these and we put them in the highest rat traffic areas, which are one underneath the duck hutch, or should I say the old duck hutch. We haven't found rat holes anywhere else but under this old duck hutch and they're just traveling everywhere else on the homestead from this point. So we have rat traps all around the duck hutch. We have them on their main like traveling route which is like behind the rabbitry up against the back of the garage. We have one underneath the wood hutch by the chicken coop. Here we have some underneath here. We have some on the other side of the rabbit tree back in this corner. And then we have some in the carport area where they've also been hiding out in my hay and where the feed bins are. We've caught in quite a few so far. So I'm hopeful that by the end of summer, beginning of fall, we can completely eradicate the rat issue here on our homestead again because we moved the turkey and the ducks in with the chickens so they have access to the rat free or rat proof feeders that I made so there's no grain or anything available on the ground for the rats to get into so we're hoping that these traps are successful that we can annihilate the colony that we have without reverting to poison. I really don't want poison on our homestead in case the dogs would get a hold of it or the chickens or anything else. So I am hopeful that the rat traps will work. We are also going to be cleaning out um, a lot of the areas where the rats have been hanging out that are just kind of a mess. So you can look forward to some videos on that. What we're going to be doing first of all is cleaning out this carport area where I store a lot of my animal feed. So I have my empty feed bags that I use for rabbit manure. I've got our feed cans. So we, we end up with feed waste on the ground, which we don't want. I have my hay storage, my straw storage, my wood chip storage, and it's just kind of a, a hideaway for the rats. So we're gonna be cleaning up this area I'm going to be putting a wall from this post back and then this is going to be like our feed room. We're going to have hay storage in here, straw storage in here, the feed bins are going to go in here, 
the empty feed bags are gonna have a storage area in here as well. And that's just gonna help clean up this space a little bit. We'll be able to get my husband's truck put back together and under here. And overall, it's just gonna help with this area being cleaner, being more organized and less appealing for rats. Along with cleaning up, this project is going to be getting the greenhouse done because the greenhouse is going to help with a lot of the storage around here as well. I can get all of my um, seed starting trays, my pots, my garden mixes, or my soil mixes, um, my diatomaceous earth, anything that I use for the garden is basically gonna go in the greenhouse. So that'll all be in one place and well organized as well. So a lot of dealing with pests is just getting things cleaned up, organized, making it less appealing for the pests and just doing your best. Sometimes those battles you just, you don't win forever and you just gotta keep up with them. Like I said, we had rats once before, we got rid of them. Unfortunately, they are back again. And so we're just gonna keep chugging along and, and do our best before winter gets here. So that is how we've been dealing with some of the garden pests that we have and homestead pests and how we've been doing our best to control and get rid of said pests here on our homestead. If you guys have dealt with pests on your homestead, I would love to hear how you've dealt with them, um, your successes, your failures, what's worked, what hasn't worked, so on and so forth. I would love to hear from you guys um, in the comments below. So go ahead and leave those in the comments. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button. The subscribe button lets you know when new videos are up on the channel and is just super helpful in supporting my channel and helping it grow as well. So thank you guys so much for coming along, for walking through my garden and hearing about all of the issues that we've been dealing with this year as far as pests go and how we've been dealing with them. Thank you for watching and remember to grow where you're planting.